And we are back. What is up, YouTuber fans, steaming fans, cryptocurrency fans? It's your boy, Brit VR. Welcome to the show. We're here at the Voice of Blockchain. I am over here with the most spectacular, enthusiastic crypto love. Say hello to everybody. Boom shakalaka. What is going on, everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. And we are here at Voice of Blockchain. Yeah. So, I recently started watching your channel maybe like two weeks ago. I haven't seen too much, but I know that you are an influencer, and since you got invited here, probably a big influencer. Um, what do what what do you talk about on your channel most of the time uh, based on cryptocurrencies? Do you talk about Bitcoin, or is it more on altcoins? So mostly on my channel, I talk about BitConnect because I really believe in it. <laughs> and, uh, I don't talk about BitConnect ever, but uh, except to say it's a scam. Watch out for other scams like POWHD and that stuff. But I just talk about anything cryptocurrency related. If it's Bitcoin, if it's an altcoin, if it's got to do with blockchain, I interview CEOs, I do news, I do everything. I talk with other YouTubers, just basically having fun. It's pretty sweet to be able to sit in front of a computer, have fun with friends, and uh, yeah, do that stuff. All right, since you're in Chicago, uh, you know, we're a huge financial market, and it's probably one of the foundations in the U.S. for cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. Do you think that CBOE may go through due to the SEC will only like to talk and have this ETF go through the big boys? I think CBOE has a good chance of going through. Whether it goes through or not, I'm not really concerned because there's the other project back to BAKKT that nobody's talking about, which has a huge influence over what's going on. They're basically doing the same thing, except it's actually backed by Bitcoin. They have influence with the New York Stock Exchange, with ICE Intercontinental Exchange. So I think that whether or not the, e the ETF goes through, that's inconsequential. Now, the SEC is reviewing their decision on the nine that they just turned down, ProShares, Direxion, Granite Shares, all of that stuff. However, coming up in the future, we have the, uh, the CBOE one, uh, VanEck. And so those, like September, are supposed to have a decision by then. They can postpone it till February. We'll see. I think... You know, some people are saying it could go through, some people are saying it won't go through. I think there's a good chance, because they already approved the Reality Shares ETF, like last week or the week before. These ones, they're reviewing them, maybe it'll approve, I'm not that optimistic on it. But uh, I'm not that concerned about ETFs in general, because really just getting more adoption of cryptocurrencies, more people learning about crypto, people are still coming in. The, uh, the amount of uh, the Bitcoin, uh, Tran not transactions, but difficulty for the algorithm keeps going up. So all that stuff are good signs. It just takes time. I think people are expecting moon Lambos or all like hashtag Wenbo and sh stuff like that. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> hashtag Wenbo. And so uh, that is not the mindset to have. It took nine years for Bitcoin to get from zero dollars to twenty thousand dollars. It's going to take a little while longer for it to rise up. All right. So. I have another question for you. With cryptocurrencies, what altcoins do you see? Because we all know that most of them are, are going to fail. What, what altcoins that you see will do something for the future, not just for price, but for technology-wise? And we're not financial advisors. We're not shillers. I've been called a shiller a time or two. Yeah, definitely. Uh, basically, since that word came out, it also can we curse on your channel or no? Of course. Okay, yeah. So apparently, I didn't know what shiller meant in the beginning. So like, I looked it up, and on Urban Dictionary, apparently, in I think it's like Scotland or somewhere, shill means penis. So basically, I've been called a penisser. It's, I mean, I have, with the ladies, yes, I am a penisser. Okay, but uh, aside from that, aside from that. I don't even remember the damn question. <laughs> so, I actually forgot the question. <laughs> all coins, all coins, all coins, gotcha, all coins. Sorry, I was thinking about my penis and some ladies. So, anyways, with all coins, okay, uh, I 
So I don't hold many altcoins. There's a good reason for this. There was an article done by Willy Wu a while back about how Bitcoin versus altcoins in days since inception, Bitcoin keeps going up, altcoins go down. So I don't hold altcoins for that simple reason. If I'm going to hold something, I hold Bitcoin. But I do believe in some altcoin projects, not financial advice, not financial advisor. I'm kind of retarded when it comes to that stuff, so don't take my advice on anything. But projects that I like because they're doing big things, they're going to be moving the markets. Things like Cardano, okay? Because they're getting blockchain adoption in countries that don't have regulations. They're going to Africa, working with supply chains in Ethiopia, getting coffee makers on the blockchain. And guess what? All of the small countries are going to be on the blockchain, and then the big countries are going to have to adopt it because of that. So Cardano's doing big stuff. Neo, I think they have a big community now. With Neo, I also say Ontology because they're one and the same. They're both from the parent company on chain. So those are a couple projects that I like. Really, I mean, there's a whole bunch of brand new projects. This, like, there, are, there are projects that I talk with, like Covalent, that's coming up with a new internet protocol to where, like, HTTP is the internet protocol we're used to. This, they're developing a new internet protocol to where you will actually have control over your data when you send it. You get to decide when you send your data how they can use that, which is brand spanking new. Other things, like I've interviewed Liquidity Network uh, a while ago, and they are doing second, uh, second layer solutions that work better than the existing ones that we have. So there's a lot of up and coming stuff, but right now we're in a bear market. Nobody cares about ICOs. Every time I talk about an ICO, completely unpaid, people are just like, you're a shill. I don't give a shit. Like, I see it. This is the thing. Smart money is getting back into crypto now. When everyone's calling everything a shill, that's when smart money's going back in. If you look at the Bitcoin rich list, all of the top 10 uh, addresses on the rich list are buying Bitcoin now when everybody else is flooding the market. They're buying now because it's at the bottom. They're not selling now. They sold back in February when everybody else, you know, FOMO'd in. So, that's my opinion. There's a whole bunch of good projects out there. You have to do your own research. Basically, we can teach people to fish, but we can't do the fishing for you. So get your rod, you know what I'm talking about, and go, and go fish for some crypto. All right. I, I can't think of nothing right now because that penis joke was just hilarious. So I guess we're going to end this. All right, last thing. All right. You were going to ask me about how I got into crypto and everything like that. I kind of just... I kind of just, I stumbled into it. Honest to, honest to God, I just stumbled into it. So here's what happened. I got into crypto at the beginning of 2017. I, uh, I fell in love with it. I was working 60 hours a week as a veterinarian, an emergency veterinarian, spending every spare minute I had researching crypto. Okay, it got to August, like right before August 1st of last year, I didn't know what to do with my Bitcoin with the Bitcoin Bcash hard fork. So I started doing all the research that I could, I came upon YouTube videos, started watching some YouTube videos, stumbled upon Crypto Daily's YouTube videos, thought the guy was funny as all get out, and I was like, hey, that looks awesome. I'm gonna give that a try. So I was like, I'll just do a video a day for a month, see how that turns out. I did a video a day for a month, it was awesome, but I was using this old computer that took two hours to render a video. So I was like, hey, if I do this for two months, I'll buy myself a new computer. So I did it for two months, bought myself a new computer, and then I was like, I'm gonna do it for 100 days. So I did a video a day for 100 days, and then I got there, and that's when things started taking off back in November. So I got invited to go do an ICO, to cover an ICO out in Poland, which was absolutely awesome. Met a whole bunch of cool YouTubers out there, like Keith Ware and Crypto Ellis, uh, a whole bunch of other people out there. And uh, so I got to cover that, and then just got, with November, December, January, things really blew up with the channel took off, met a lot of other people, got invited to more stuff. But basically at the 100 days that I'd done, I was like, I'm going to do 365 days in a row, which I just completed on August 21st, which is absolutely awesome. I actually did 500 videos in 365 days, which is mind blowing. A lot of videos that I did and uh, it was tiring, but it was totally worth it because I love this stuff and I spend my time doing it anyways. So, uh, you know, it's nice to do it for a job. Well, good luck with your personal life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing. So I just want to thank you. Uh, hopefully we can do some stuff in the future. And everybody here, you guys have a good day and you guys have a good night. Peace, 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 peace. And enjoy the crypto life.